It is Fertility Answers Live with Alice Creechie, co-founder and CEO of the Fertility Answers app, and my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Serena H. Chen, who's finally back. Yay! I'm so happy that you're back. I hope that you enjoyed your time off. We have a lot to cover today. Yes. So today's Monday Motivation is a tough topic because we need to address coronavirus as it relates to fertility, and yes. we don't have a lot of answers. So I think today's topic is going to be a motivating people to have the right conversation with their provider. But we know some things. Yeah, I think the big thing is that we know that coronavirus is very unlikely to live in eggs or sperm. So that's good news. That's great. Um, I also think that, you know, if you've been to a high risk area you're, and you don't get sick, you're cleared within 14 days, which is also really good. So that's different from Zika virus, mm -hmm. which is if you've traveled to a Zika virus area, it could take two to three months before you're cleared, even if you right. never have symptoms. I also think it's important to look at the relative scale of things so that the flu is apparently already responsible this year in the United States for thousands and thousands of deaths. And really coronavirus, it, the numbers for coronavirus are very small compared to the flu. And the flu, we have a vaccine, which we would really like everybody trying to conceive or pregnant or everybody to get the flu vaccine because you can dramatically reduce the risk to yourself, to your children, to your family, to everybody by getting the vaccine. It's not perfect, but it really helps to reduce the in flu infection and the death rate. And we worry about the flu a lot because pregnant people are one of the vulnerable populations that can die from the flu. Pregnant people don't appear to be more um, more susceptible to death from the coronavirus. So I think that's also, that's also a positive. I agree with that's that. A positive, mm -hmm. That's a positive. That's a positive for our population. You know, we don't know for sure, but it appears that pregnant people are not necessarily more vulnerable to the coronavirus. It seems like if you're healthy and you're pregnant, you kind of ha are the same as everybody else. So let's so. take a step back for a quick minute and, and let's let's actually remember what it was like when Zika hit and when SARS hit, because there are similarities. This isn't going to be the last virus that is. That's true. That this happens where it's scary. There's a lot of misinformation. People might be blowing it out of proportion. You know, we haven't we haven't necessarily ever seen maybe the, the length of time people are being quarantined for in you know, whole cities. Right. Uh, and I, I certainly don't remember with Zika travel being shut down like this, but I might be remembering wrong. So let, let's back up for a second. Remember Zika because Zika was really devastating to people who were pregnant because we had an, an, a birth defect that was caused by that virus. And it was, correct me if I'm wrong, mosquito borne virus. Mosquito right. so, born and sexually transmitted. Now, we didn't have travel shutdown with Zika because people weren't really, um, because it was sexual transmission and mosquito born transmission, right. and the big risk was birth defects. Right. So it wasn't like we were going to have like a public health epidemic. If a lot of people got Zika, they would get a little bit sick and then right. they would be done. Be fine, unless so the issue pregnant. is really more about for reproductive people in reproduction worried about like having a baby that could have birth defects. So what happened to Zika? So Zika, the Zika outbreak, the epidemic seems to be under good control, but the risk for getting Zika if you travel to high risk areas um, is still potentially there. So we still like people who are trying to conceive and pregnant to avoid travel to the Caribbean, Central America, Cent South America, Southeast Asia, and Central Africa. And you can okay. look on the CDC website to look at the map and see, you know, what are the areas you shouldn't travel to. Now, the CDC map is a little bit confusing right now because you're supposed to avoid travel to the purple areas, except for the continental United States and France are purple. 
Those are not travel advisories. Those are mosquito advisories. Ah, gotcha. Okay. The purple areas in the rest of the world outside continental United okay. States and France are travel advisories. And if you okay. travel to those areas, you really should try not to get pregnant for two to three months. And the details really depend upon your particular situation. You should talk with your doctor. Okay. So let's then jump from that to it kind of got handled. I, I, it feels a little mysterious about why it's well managed, but now let's jump to how the immune system is involved in trying to conceive and kind of what happens so that we can address just the immunity nature of trying to fight off a virus at the same time of trying to support a healthy pregnancy. How is the immune system involved when you're trying to conceive and growing a human inside your body? It's a lot of it. It's actually a mystery, Alice, but I think that there is some evidence that pregnant women, number one, when you're pregnant, a lot of resources in your body are being taken up for the pregnancy, mm -hmm. you know? So you can imagine that if somebody like maybe is a, like some of their health resources have been taken away because they're run down or whatever, um, that they might not fight off an infection as well. And that's probably part of it. I'm not sure that we have something more precise than that to tell you. Like Zika is really not in that category. The Zika issue is more that the virus replicates in the placenta and okay. then impacts the child so we don't have a, that data a, on this virus that's a little funky right but right. with the flu um with the flu it just appears that you know pregnant pregnant women are more susceptible to serious complications of the flu so most people get the flu they feel horrible 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 for a few days but then they get better but if the people that get the flu and end up in the hospital are people who are sick and old and immunocompromised and pregnant women. That so is. those, you know, we just know, and, and that's why there's such a strong recommendation every single year from American College of OBGYN, the WHO, mm -hmm. the CDC, ASRM, for people that are planning to get pregnant or pregnant to get the flu shot because we really do feel like you're high risk. Um, and even if you do get those things in first trimester, there's very few over the counter remedies, medicines, you know, uh, things that we can buy at CVS or Walgreens that can, can alleviate our symptoms too. I mean, isn't that also true? There are certain things we have to avoid during first trimester. So, um, I don't know that that's really true, but those things, even though you can run out to the drugstore and buy those things, we don't want you to buy those things or take those things without talking to a doctor. Right. So if you are feeling sick, you need to just, you need to go get some real medical advice. You need to go and get examined and tested. And then the doctor basically weighs the risks and the benefits of over the counter and prescription medications and will tell you what's okay and what's not okay to take. Because like, we don't want you to take Tylenol for no reason, but if you have a high fever, the risk of the high fever is higher than the risk of Tylenol. So in right. that particular case, we would probably give you Tylenol. But of course, it depends. Like what if you have a liver issue? Then we probably wouldn't give you Tylenol. So it, it's- um, but Don't self-medicate. Don't my self people is, don't self medicate. Actually, speak to your primary care doctor. Speak to your OB. Speak to your fertility specialist if you're still Absolutely. in the nine week window of being taken care of by a doctor Chen, you know, or someone who is an REI that you, that you're being taken yes. care of. Do right. not wing this. Don't just run out to the drugstore. Don't ask Doctor Google what to do. Right, Talk especially to not for your her. doctor. Yeah. So, what what is your health system recommending, even to healthcare providers? Because we certainly also don't want somebody who is suspected of having coronavirus. The whole fourteen day quarantine is really important. We don't want them running into to a, a right. sick clinic, you know, and staying in the sick waiting room and then spreading the coronavirus everywhere. Right. So, what is your health system recommending to? So People, we, they're recommending everybody who's coming from the high risk places right now. It's China, mm -hmm. Iran, Italy, and Korea. Those uh, those countries are on red alert now. Right. Orange alert is Japan. Yellow alert is Hong Kong. 
So those, and it may change. Tomorrow it may change. So the big thing is cdc.gov, uh, put in the search term coronavirus or flu or Zika virus, whatever you're looking for. The CDC is doing a phenomenal job of trying to get the right information out very, very quickly. And I've been watching this. They've been, you know, they've been changing the alerts every day sure. as they're learning Perhaps. more. And, so we do know um, that there's been a couple of reported cases that, that they can't trace to one of the high risk areas. And I think that's where a lot of this fear and panic come from. Right. And right. So we also know about this virus that it lives on surfaces for a very long time. My understanding is it's, it does, it's not clear that it lives on surfaces for a very long time, but that is why you really need to wash your hands frequently because right. when you are possibly touching possibly infected surfaces and we don't know how long the virus can live around and then you touch your eye or you touch your nose or you touch your mouth, that's how you can possibly inoculate yourself and that is why hand washing is so important. Wearing a mask you know, unless you're you're taking care of somebody who's actively coughing on you right. and has a fever, wearing a mask is really not protective. Um, you know, like there, the CDC recommends try to stay six feet away from people mm -hmm. that are coughing and people that are coughing or have a fever really should be staying at home or wearing a mask. But this idea of yeah. you going, you and I going out and wearing a mask it's, it's not actually much take. better for us just to keep right. washing our hands and to and to tell our patients, you know, and we've been telling our patients, you know, if you have a fever, um, you should stay at home. Like, you know, even if you've never been to a high risk area, sure, you have something that's infectious yeah, and you shouldn't be infecting other people. So here's something, though, I think that we have to address, and that's medical tourism in our field, because the Chinese market is virtually shut down right now for anyone who was expecting to come to the U.S. to do an egg donor cycle, a surrogacy cycle, or an IVF cycle, which, you know, I just find devastating, right, to consider that, that someone is lying in wait because of what they're dealing with, um, with this epidemic, it's really devastating to think about it. Italy now is facing the same, you know, where where folks who need IVF with PGD have to get out of Italy to do it, you know, or yeah. something with their surrogacy cycle, you know. I mean, how long do you think this might last? It might. Well, you know, the 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 biology, and I'm not a virologist, obviously, but it does seem like the biology of these coronaviruses that we with they um, they seem to do really well in cold temperatures. So it does seem like heat makes a difference. So like, you know, boiling things and using disinfectant and hot weather, like when the weather changes, it does seem like a lot of people believe that um, it's going to get better then. Obviously, we don't know that for sure. But in general, coronaviruses do seem to do really well in, in cooler temperatures. Cool. So heat up the body. So go ahead and douse your eggs with hot sauce, in other words, or like <laughs> ginger tea. I mean, how, how hot can you take it? Wasabi it up on uh, on your, your salmon sushi? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's like spicy heat. I think we're talking temperature heat. Yeah. <laughs> we can't, we can't, well, exercise. I mean, we can increase our core body temperature, at least temporarily. Um, does exercise. And, and I think, you know, it's just like other viruses, like, getting enough sleep, eating your vegetables, taking yeah. your vitamins and getting regular exercise are all, you know, they're all good ideas for staying healthy in general. I think the same applies to the virus. You do, you know, if you see somebody coughing, stay away from them. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell people at work, listen to me, I'm coughing. I know that's funny. So, the combination, <laughs> so we're the, the, this is the, just to help you, this is the, the, the latest just came out yesterday screening Screening for coronavirus is high fever, upper or lower respiratory infection, and within 14 days, travel to one of the high-risk areas or contact with somebody who's been traveling to a high-risk area. Pe all people that are hospitalized with a high fever and lower or upper respiratory infection will now be screened for coronavirus regardless of travel precautions. So the super severe people in the hospital, all of those people now uh, by CDC guidelines will have to be screened for coronavirus. But if you're not in the hospital, it really is related to 
where have you been? Have you been to a high risk area? And again, obviously that's okay. China, Iran, Italy, um, and um, I'm forgetting one. China, Iran, Italy, Korea. Those are the highest. And you mentioned Hong Kong ones. is yellow. And Japan and yeah. Hong Kong oh, are, yellow. are kind okay. of on that list as well. So my last quick question before we wrap it up, that was our alarm so we wouldn't go over today since you and I are historically, historically we go over, is so there are all these clinics though that cater to those international populations. So what should folks be asking before they go into their clinic, their local clinic? You know, there's lots in California who cater to the Chinese population and in New York. And, right. so, you know, should be, we don't want people to panic again, you know, should they be calling up the clinic and finding out, you know, have you had any patients that have traveled within the last 14 days from these hotspot areas? You know, what are you doing about it? Is well, there anything you know, the thing is at this point, like how do people get here from those countries? They come through the airport and mm -hmm. everybody coming from those areas actually is being pulled aside uh, at the, at the level of our airports. Okay. So they are, you know, if you're they are being from, quarantined. Yeah, they're okay. they're they're being pulled aside and screened. Okay. So um, so I feel I feel like it's certainly reasonable for people to call their clinics and say, "What are you doing about this?" But I don't think you have to. I don't. I feel like it's um, it's it's not helpful to like just you know stay at home and worry about like oh you might have. Sure. Somebody at your clinic with that. I feel. I feel like that's probably going beyond what you need to do. Going going into panic mode rather than just self self uh, I don't, reassurance and you know just not being. Right. We don't want people to panic. Now, one thing that I did want to ask, and I, I thought I had my last question. This is my last question: is there's okay. been a lot of talk about the medications that are that are manufactured in China not being able to get out of China because they have you know workers on lockdown. You know, people right. are still whole cities that are being quarantined. Does that affect the fertility field at all? Do you know of any medications that are manufactured in China where we might see a shortage of fertility medications related to an? Not, not that I'm aware of right now. Okay. I'm aware of right now. But, it, but if we do learn of that, we'll, we'll be the first to let everybody know. Um, Absolutely. You know, we Absolutely. certainly don't want that to be an issue either if somebody can't get their Clomid or Metformin or, um, you know, any of the drugs that are manufactured for hormone stimulation itself or for trigger shots, et cetera. So the key is, is treat this like any other flu season and virus. Don't treat it as anything scarier than that. You know, practice logic and reason, uh, you know, street smarts, don't yeah. have to wear a mask because it's not protecting you anyway. Um, but washing your hands. Washing a lot. Avoid, avoid, you know, rubbing your eyes. Your arms. Your face, yep. And but your nose. And just um, check in with the CDC.gov site. A great way to follow the CDC is actually through social media. They're very good at putting out alerts through social media. Um, and but this we'll, include the link. we'll include the link below yeah. the heat map. Exactly. So and the CDC.gov site is, is they're, they're excellent for all those kinds of things. So before, you know, before you travel anywhere, they're, they're very up to date on all of those things. And they are doing screening at the airports. So right. if somebody, if somebody fits the quarantine criteria, they're catching them at the airports and, you know, like just, it, it's, we don't, we really don't, feel like the risks are super high at this point. We actually feel like the risk for getting the flu is higher. So we do want people to think about going going ahead to get the vaccine. Okay, it does sound like it. Well, we're so grateful for all your input on that. And you have such a calm presence and demeanor about it. And I, I think a lot of our patients are concerned and just curious. You know, yes. how much of this is, is a consideration as they're actively trying to conceive. You can always find us on the Fertility Answers app. We had a beautiful release today um, that we can match you directly to providers in your area, to solutions that you need, and even clinical trials in a very visually compelling way on your app platform. It's available on iOS and Android. So check out um, Dr. Chen, certainly inside the platform. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place, for our Monday Motivation with Alice and Dr. Chen. Thanks, Serena. Thank Good to have you back. Bye.